Hi, how are y'all doing? Um, welcome to a weekend session of some deep dive into some stocks. Um, we'll be going over flow trade system a little bit. Definitely looking at this upcoming week's picks. Had quite a big response on Twitter. I've got a huge list to go through, so I might break it up into sessions of about five apiece. But uh, thanks for the response on Twitter. Love you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, today is Saturday, April 10th. We had a massive blow-off top on Friday with SPX. Um, really interesting what's going on here. Um, I've got some charts if you look at pre, pre uh, beer bug level to now, you can see that we hit a major retracement level and it lines back up with the natural flow. So we may go into that again. If you find any of this content valuable, please hit the like button, smash it, beat it up, subscribe, leave, leave some comments for me, and I'll try to get to them. Uh, again, this is a learning process, a development process we're going through, getting the, everything set up correctly and finding out what you guys really need. I'm more about providing you what you want rather than pushing my agenda and what I feel you want. So. If you've got something specific you're looking for, if you've got any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I try to respond as quickly as possible. And let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. I've got a massive list from Twitter to go through today, and I'm gonna to try to get through as many as I can. I've gone ahead and spent the last little while marking out some major Keltner channel levels so the charting should go a little bit quicker. I'm trying to enlarge the size of my charts so that you guys can actually see what I've got going on. And I went ahead and added all of them to my watch list at Flowtrade. So I am going to go in the order of volume based on last week. So the first one we're going to start with is Fubo. Fubo. There was some news that came out on it. Um, I believe they were being sued or something like that. But they also recently won the national soccer contract, um, or something along those lines. Looking at the algo, algo has been selling pretty dramatically. We did come down and find support at this block level at $23. It appears the algo may be curling up a little bit, but it's still selling. We do have a divergence on the 15 minute chart here. And just get some tools out. It's like we had a divergence here. And we've got curling of the algo here. What we'd like to see is for this to turn around and have the algo start buying. From the chart perspective, looks like price came down, bounced off the daily bottom, the $21 level. Chopped around there for a little while, found support. It was oversold. MACD is starting to turn positive. Once this curls over, it's called a golden cross, and it typically indicates a reversal in direction. The only thing that we've got immediately in the way is 180 day EMA at this $25, $26 level. Once we can get through that, we're gonna head back up towards the daily top right at 30. I'm not super thrilled with the negatives of this. However, this is a highly shorted stock and any sort of continued vol volume, we can see some pretty good price movement. I'm gonna bring this down to the four hour. All right, four hour chart. Sorry guys. Do this again. Four hour chart, you can see we came down, smacked the daily bottom. We're starting to get positive moving averages on the lower time frames. 
we've got a squeeze that's starting to fire positive. We have low compression four hour squeeze with a positive histogram. We're currently in a squeeze on the four hour If I was going to take a position in this, this 180 day moving average, it's got me really nervous, plus all of the uh, negative news that's come out on it. However, if things start to turn around, we can look at the daily mid and the daily 180 day EMA as resistance, so right at 26. Next step would be the 50% retracement, right at 27.50, and then the next major area of resistance would be this 180-day EMA right at 29. So for FUBU, FUBO, whatever you call it, look to go 26. Then 27.50 and finally 29. All right, moving through to the next one, we're going to hit up Neo real quick. <clears throat> All right, Neo. Been selling off recently. It's got this nice double bottom here that it hit. Came down, smacked into the daily weekly bottom at 35. Popped back up through the daily top, or excuse me, through the four hour top and the daily mid right at 40. Ran into some resistance at the value area high. Came back down, found support on that 180 day EMA. MACD starting to turn green. We're in a good value area. We've got a nice hammer doji on the daily. Immediate resistance is to 21 EMA right at 40. If it can get through that, it's gonna run into the 34 EMA right around 42.50. However, this thing does move and looking at it, on the four hour chart, same kind of setup. We're in a squeeze, which probably, if it were to fire, would fire to the short side since the EMAs are stacked on top of it. Losing momentum. It's under the VWAP. What I do like, however, though, is there is a four hour, a daily, and a two day yellow histogram, which means as soon as that turns light blue, what we're gonna get is, sorry about that. What we're gonna get is we're gonna get a, a nice squeeze firing, uh, and then really depending upon where the EMA is, if they're stacked positive, it may fire to the long side. Okay. Again, we're in a low compression, 15 minute squeeze. My MACD indicators on the, the 30, the four hour, or excuse me, the 30, the one hour, and the four hour are positive. We've got declining momentum on the histogram. Looks like we pulled into a flagging pattern on the lower time frames. Not sure I feel about the size of my charts. Um, if I were to take a position long, sorry, I want to look at one more thing real quick.
Okay. So Neo closed out Friday. Again, it's got this nice little double bottom pattern. It, it may be looking to retrace or depending on how the market opens, find support again at the daily bottom. So I'm looking at 35, 36 for support. It's currently at the four hour Keltner channel mid. With, like I said, positive MACD. This could run up to hit 40, which would be the four hour top. At that point, it's gonna make a decision whether it wants to go through that up to 44, which is also the 180 day EMA and another major level of resistance. If I were to throw some fibs up here, one is high to low, that 50% 50, 50 retracement from previous Last week, or let's see, when was that? A couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, from the last daily top high to this last low, the 50% retracement is right at the four hour top, so right at 40. So 40 is gonna be a pretty significant number. If we get through that, the next immediate target is gonna be the 41, or the 618 retracement, which is 41, 67 and then the daily top which is 44 looking at neo over on the algo so the algo has been buying at the end of last week we've got this nice i'm going to draw this on here for you guys so you can see it real quick we've got this nice bottom curl reversal pattern or reversal curling up on the dark pool algo this would be an indication that the price may have found major area of support and it's starting to turn up so what I would like for NEO to do would be the shorter term one minute algo to continue to buy. As, as you can see here, it's been buying. I would like this. Sorry, wrong tool. <laughs> I'd like this to continue to go up. This $39 level block trade that you see here is going to provide resistance, which is in line with the chart. Look for the next magnet level at 42, which would be the the last printed block trade. So 42 is a 180 day EMA. 4167 is the 618 retracement, which is very in line with this last block trade level that you can see here. Come on. Neo has an ATR, average true range of about a two dollars. Oh, hold on, sorry. Try that again. About three dollars per day. Definitely could potentially see forty-one this week if it breaks through the daily top at forty-four. Fifty is the next target level, followed by fifty-one. You know. So, break of 40, target 42, then 45, 50. Lots of people have been asking about Viacom. Has it found the bottom yet? Do we know what's going on? All right, so Viacom's kind of tricky. Um, negative ADX, 
3% of the 60 day channel, negative VWAP, negative beta. I would really like to see this consolidate and I don't really even want to talk about getting back into it until it gets above this 180 day EMA, which is currently at a $46 price level. This giant cluster of lines that you see here is the Keltner channels, specifically the daily bottom, the weekly mid, and the monthly top. This is going to be a huge area of congestion. It's going to need a lot of momentum to get it through. Draw this as a cloud. This area here from 55 so basically from 50 to 55 it's going to be a cluster of resistance however the algo for Viacom has been straight up net buying for weeks this giant level of block trades that you see here from about 45 to 50 really coincides with the Keltner channel major support resistance levels. A break of 52 and this does have the potential to run. However, it's got to get through it to get back up here. The algo is steady buying on both the 15 minute and the one minute chart. We've got some block trades starting to roll in. The latest one was for at 42 and that was on the 9th. Going to keep an eye on this, I call it the intraday algo because it is curled down. If I were to see this 15 minute algo curl down, I would just continue to sit and wait because it's just consolidating massively right now. We are in we've got no squeezes going on. We've got that giant cloud area to get to followed by 180 day EMA after that at 60. So definitely this May seems to have found a bottom at 41, 40, 41, right? So Viacom consolidating at 42, a break of 55. for a target of 60, anywhere from 50 to 55 is probably going to be chop again. So, oh Fibonacci. Fibonacci says that the 50% retracement is right at 55. That 618 is at the 58 level. It's an awful lot of red. Shorter term target. If options are super cheap. Yeah, you'd have to break 42.50 for potential, yeah, like I said, guys, um, <clears throat> honestly, I would just keep it, on your, keep it on your radar, but I wouldn't touch this until there's some, you know, like I said, the break of 50, 
the 55, that break of 55, then there's plenty of room to go up. Um, just don't, it, yeah, just, I'm, I'm going to stay away from Viacom for the next little while. All right, Bank of America, from what I understand, bank earnings begin next week. Um, this looks great. We're positive ADX. We're within 99% of uh, the 52-week high. We're at a 97% 97 of the 60-day channel. Our EMAs are stacked. We have a positive VWAP. We're currently at the daily top in the four-hour mid at $40 with support at the monthly top and the daily mid, the four-hour bottom at 38 so, I thought of that. they have earnings coming up on. So earnings end of next week. Typically, if you're in anything before earnings, I like to get out. I've always been burned if I've ever held through earnings. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor. You manage your risk in your own way. Please do your own due diligence. And anything I say is just for entertainment purposes because I'm very entertaining. All right. Uh, Viacom, excuse me, uh, Bank of America, we have $38 support, which will end up being this. You can't see my trend line, but there's a trend line here from this low. Come on. From this low to this low, which is also the 21 EMA, which is also those color channels that I mentioned. Monthly top, daily mid, four hour bottom, $38, $38.50 for support. Lower time frame, 15 minute chart, and let me show you the four hour first. our chart we're still in an uptrend we've come down we have found support at the 34 recently 34 EMA looks like we're consolidating any sort of uh, Nice little wavy bull flag pattern here. Again, break of break of 40.50, and this is probably going to blow out the top. Okay, I don't like this enlarged chart. I might I might have to switch it back. Okay. All right, so as far as positives, we've got light blue histogram. We are in a four hour mid compression squeeze. When that fires, we're probably gonna get a greater than, ex greater than expected move to the upside. Our EMAs are stacked on top of each other. The eight's on top of the 21, which is on top of the 34. We are in an uptrend We've got a buy signal from the Radiant Fire. We've got earnings coming up, which is usually, you can expect to run into earnings. Fibonacci tells us that we have a potential price target of See this area here where my Fibonacci retracement and extension cross? I call that, that's pretty significant symmetry in my opinion. If we break this 
daily top, which is our four hour mid at $40. So, Bank of America, $38 support. We have a break of 40 for a run to, I'm gonna call it 41 and then 42. Our support is at 38, which is the another confluence that we have here. You guys can see that. This $38 level happens to coincide with daily mid, monthly top. 618 retracement, or excuse me, 618, yeah, 618 retracement, 34 EMA, and the slower trend line. The slower trend line here. So, all right, the next one is Ford. And like I said, guys, um, oh, Sorry, Bank of America on um, the Alga. So you guys are here for you're not here to hear me. But hear me. All right, great vertical move um, last week. I think everything kind of ran at the end of the week. This V-shaped move, lots of block trades coming in. I want to see the last, the last eight. We have got. bullish we're in a bullish trend obviously we've got retracement to support at 39 with a reversion excuse me with a reversal that can be seen here we have a block trade that came in Last five block trades. Got a block trade at 40.10. So we are in an uptrend. We've recently came down and found support uh, a support level. The algo is net buying. We've got support from our Keltner channels. Oh. We've got Keltner channel support, EMA support, Trend line support, Fibonacci support, all at 38. We've got a break of 40. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Um, where was I? A uh, break of this daily top four hour mid. Again, run of, you know, we talked about it earlier. Run to 40, 42, 41, 42. All right, moving on to Ford. All right. Ford, we've got positive MACD maybe turning down. Looks like we've got that same W pattern that's kind of formed. Come down, we found support. These things are came down. We found support at the daily bottom. Quick pop back up to the daily mid, which is also the weekly top and the four hour mid. It, it went in and tested the weekly cloud, or excuse me, the weekly top. Came back down, found support again at the 34. We are in an overall uptrend. make this a little bigger here for you guys sorry about that I thought I had everything else set up I was all excited 
It's like, I've got it all set up. No dead airspace today. And we're going to make this bright ass color. Hopefully you guys can see this a little better. Can't go with orange. Jeez. Light. All right. All right. Trend line came up, peeked our head out, right? Went up, touched thirteen. Went up and touched thirteen. Came back down. Our EMAs are stacked. We've got. All right, so. Sold off, came down, found support, the daily bottom. Peaked its head up, went up and tested the weekly top, the daily mid and the four hour mid. Rejected that, came down, found support on this trend line. Again, which is also the four hour bottom. Made a run from the four hour bottom to this four hour top here, which is this level at 13. Got rejected, came back down, found support again on the in our EMAs. Weekly top, daily mid, and now we're at four hour mid support. So if this little pattern here tells us anything, this level of support is probably gonna hold for the next push, for the next push higher. Gonna, right with immediate resistance at the four hour you know we're gonna go back up and test 13 if we get through 13 1325 would be the next area for us to test as far as the Keltner channels are concerned Fibonacci tells us that All right, I just realized my mic was off, so let me just repeat all that. Um, all right, Carnival Algo is trading with price action. Um, on the 15 minute chart, we've got general, again, trading with price action. Looks as if though we've got some buying happening Recently, we've got, let's see if I can get this drawn here. We've breached this block trade level at 29.55. Came down and found the support again at another block trade level at 28.90. And we're on our way back up. Price action is telling us that our MACD is positive and increasing. We are coming out of a fair value area. We're not quite oversold. We've done the let's see what our if we had to use trend line as support, we're in an overall uptrend. Our EMAs are stacked positive. As you can see here, the eight's on top of the 21, on top of the 34. We are at a support level in the weekly cloud. So the weekly Keltner channel um, top is this $30 level, which is also a psychological level. So if we were to break 30, um, I'll bring some Fibonacci in to see where we could possibly go. But we also have to get through the daily top, which is the 3075. I'd be a buyer at 3075 or possibly 31. Fibonacci is telling us that. We came in, we tested. We came back down and tested the 618 retracement. Our extension is going to give us a price target 
that should be very similar to the retracement level. In this instance, I'm going to use the 141 extension and retracement as my price target. So that 32.5 level would be my first target. 34 is my second. So for CCL, a break of 30.75. Look for a run to 32.5, then 34 on the intraday chart. Just came out of earnings. We've got a mid, mid level thrust buy signal. On the four hour, we've got a looks. Let's see if I can do this. We've got green momentum candles. Looks as if, though, we've got this little flag forming on the four hour here. Right? We have trend line support from previous low, which coincides with our moving average levels at 21. We've got about 40 cents downside to over a dollar and a half upside. That puts me in a bullish position. There's that little flag I was talking about. Fibonacci again on the in, on the lower time frames. Same same type of thing. Came up, we tested the six one eight retracement. Re lots of profit taking took place. Came down, found support at the thirty four EMA. Now we're in our move back upwards. It, we have mid compression squeezes on the intraday. What will happen when the this 15, 20, and 30 minute fire? You can anticipate a move. If this if the EMAs are stacked, a move upwards. Our squeeze pro histogram, <clears throat> excuse me, is consolidating. Our MACDs are stacked, positive. So positive 15, positive 30, positive hour, MACDs. Yeah, this this looks good. Um, I'm definitely gonna look for a position on this at that 32 level. All right guys, AMD. Last couple ones here. AMD, we have bearish divergence on the 15 minute. However, most of that is played out. As you can see here, most of that divergence has been played out. We did come down at the end of Friday and found support at 82.75 or 82.66, which was the block trade level. What I'm not super thrilled about is this curling down of the MACD, or excuse me, of the uh, dark pool algo. What I do like, however, is a shorter term play. We've got bullish divergence on the one minute chart. As 
as this can be seen here. Bullish divergence on the one minute chart. Let's see if I can highlight that. So this will eventually need to trade out. So wait for it to find a good reversal area. Possibly that block trade. Let's see what our charts sell us. 82.66 is the block trade level that I'm looking at. All right. So AMD. Again, it's that double bottom pattern in price action. Let me just. All right. You now there's a lot of reading going on here. All right. So. All right. Price came down, found support. The daily bottom, weekly bottom, this area here. Came down, found support. Came back up, tested the 34 EMA on a retracement. Got rejected, which is also the daily top. So it's the daily, the monthly, and the four hour top cluster, right? This whole area here, about here to here. It's in, it's just a resistance cluster. And this looks like a support cluster. So what does that say? Range, right? Range from the daily weekly bottom to the daily monthly top back down with a pit stop right around the daily mid, which is this 70, we're gonna call it $80 level. So with, which happens to also coincide with the 180 day moving average. So our eight EMA is on its way back up. Once these EMAs get stacked positive, we may have enough support and momentum to pop through this cluster from 82.5 to 84.5. So that $2 cluster range, AMD is in a two, let's see, 84, excuse me, 82, 84 resistant cluster. Break of that, have room to weekly mid at 87.5. Contrarian, look for a fade to the weekly bottom at 76. Fibonacci on the upside would tell us that we would go from oh that's beautiful symmetry so our weekly mid and the 127 extension is at 87.5 level with support at the 4 hour bottom which is also the 618 retracement level at 81. On the indicator page, on the four hour chart, we've got yellow and light blue histogram, which is rising support, right? Not as strong as selling. We are in a squeeze. So we may just consolidate for a couple days, but 
and he gets traded a lot. Alright, positive UAP. Our EMAs are stacked. Our 4, our MACD is negative. We're just above the 180 day moving average on the 4 hour chart. If we can maintain that stacked positive EMAs, Mr. Fib, it's got that 87 target for resistance followed by 90. Contrarian, we've got support at 7650 level. All right, last one is going to be Tesla. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. It's been going on with Tesla lately. All right. All right, so Tesla. The algos sold, 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 sold. Selling all the last couple weeks. This curling down here at the bottom indicates they may have finally stopped selling off. We have got the nice V-shaped pattern on the one minute chart. Price action, dark pool price action is trading with the algo. If this is truly a bottom and it curls on its way back up, we have block trades that came in at 696 and 697. We're going to look for this as Sorry guys. We'll look for this as block trade resistance here. And block trade resistance here. 682 684. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's on the daily. We sold off, we came down, we found support at the monthly top, which is also in the 180 day EMA. We reversed, came back up through the daily mid at 665, went up and peaked and touched the daily top, which is also the weekly mid at 712. Didn't like that. Consolidated for a few days between the daily mid and the daily top. So from 655 to 712, back and forth, sold off, sold off, sold off to the daily bottom, which is a 613 level. Sorry, I didn't get that marked up. So 600 support is daily bottom. Also came down and touched that 180 day EMA, this area here, which is why I really like that moving average indicator. Tesla, once again, is also doing this kind of, I don't even know how I can draw it on here, 
this H or W shape pattern where it comes down, goes up, comes down again, and then usually launches up after that. Since we had so many Keltner channels to deal with in this level here, right, daily top, weekly mid, it's going to act as some pretty strong resistance, so that's 712.53. What I'd like to see happen with Tesla is if we can maintain that daily mid support at 665 to gather some energy. Our 50% retracement is right in this cluster area, which is the daily top cluster, I'm going to call it. So from 7.30 to 7.13, this cluster area. There's going to be a lot of resistance for Tesla, but as it continues to move forward in time, it's going to kind of squeeze, right? I would anticipate a squeeze happening. Maybe some choppiness back and forth until the EMAs get stacked positive. We've got positive EWAC, two times beta SPY. We've got average true range of about, oh well, $40 a day movement on Tesla. Our four hour Keltner channel is that daily mid level. So 665 is gonna be our major support level. If we get enough momentum over the next couple days to get through this 732 then we've got room to run however I wouldn't be surprised to see Tesla bounce just range trade from 690 to 630 over the next couple of weeks you know until it kind of works itself out with this massive sell-off by the algo massive algo selling All right, Tesla on the indicator chart. Positive VWAP, increasing rising histogram. So the yellow is turning into the light blues. We're in a mid compression squeeze on the four hour daily three day, four day, weekly. When those pop, that's when we might get enough thrust to put us through this little resistance cloud from 712 to 732. Not sure when this is gonna happen, but we have this, what are you calling up? So we've got an EMA squeeze. Um, Anytime your lower time frame EMAs cross over a longer term EMA, there's usually a sell off, right? There's usually a fade. Um, this 180 day EMA is a major support area, major support indicator. What we've got going on in this little area here with Tesla is we're trying to you guys can see that. But the EMAs are try or are squeezing. It's an EMA squeeze. I don't know if you if there's if there's more technical term other than the EMAs are coming together and squeezing. And what happens if you squeeze something too hard? It pops. If we get above this 
180 day EMA, we're gonna have a pop more than likely to the upside. Our squeeze, his, you know, our squeeze pro and our radiant fire pro can kind of coincides, coincides with this EMA squeeze, right? We're chop, 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 we're, you know, positive momentum, negative momentum, positive momentum, negative momentum, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until Tesla decides to finally make up its mind and, and move in a direction. When that happens, then I'll be interested in it again. Until then, I'm just going to sit here and watch it frustrate millions of people. If you're looking for price targets based on Fibonacci, Seven fifty is going to be a major, major target. It's also a nice round hole number. If you can break this seven thirty seven, I don't want to call it. Let's say break a seven twenty. We're going to hit seven fifty. Um, Break 720, move 750. Contrarian, we can trade from 690 to 620 range bound. Oh shit, we got earnings. Um, Alright, so Tesla has earnings. Oh, come on. Tesla has earnings in two weeks. This could be a potential run into earnings play. Um, it just contradicts everything I've said, but all right, if we look at it this way, let's say it came down, it's making the W-shaped double bottom pattern. The algos have turned. We've got two weeks as a run into earnings. Again, we have to break this 720 level. I'm okay. We break 720, 730. We'll eat up 762 on the way, on the way up to 750, then 800. So range, a break of 720 for move to 760. Yeah, I'll stick with that. So to reiterate, we get above this 180 day moving average for a run into earnings, Tesla needs to break the 720 barrier of this massive cluster of resistance. Break of 720 puts us on a path to 750, 760. But for me, I need to see this algo line here start moving in this upward direction to not get faked out. All right, uh, that's it. Hopefully this went a little better than the last couple ones. Um, I'm definitely listening to your feedback. I'm getting a lot of feedback on Twitter and on YouTube. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe provide some feedback in the comments. Again, it's all, I take it all as constructive. I'm really asking from you guys what you need. Um, you know, these charts look nothing like my trading charts. I'm trying to provide a service for you guys. So yeah, uh, comments are always welcome. And if you found any value, make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks guys, have a great weekend.